we're going to explore the best dividend funds to build your passive retirement income when you retire. So stay tuned for the full episode. Welcome back. This is Richard with Wisdom Investor. We've got some real good information to share with you today. We're going to look at the best dividend ETF funds that you can use to build your passive income for retirement. Now, Social Security is limited, so many potential retirees are looking for ways to develop a passive income to supplement their Social Security. Now, in addition to investing for retirement, we also talk about Social Security questions, when to retire, how much money you need to save for retirement, where to retire, and much more. Here's our agenda for today's video. We're going to take a look at the advantages of dividend ETF funds. We're going to look at a list of high yield dividend growth ETF funds that you can build passive income in your retirement. We're also going to look at top growth dividend ETF funds to build passive income for retirement. We're going to look at the best time to buy and also the passive income potential. For those new investors that are asking what is an ETF, an ETF stands for exchange traded fund. It's very much like a mutual fund that holds a group of stocks and equities that trade on the stock market. We're looking at a portfolio for a mutual fund. This is Vanguard Equity Income. Now Vanguard Equity Income holds a total of 192 stocks. The top 10 holdings in this particular mutual fund you can see here below are top blue chip stocks. Now we're looking at an ETF fund. We're looking at Invesco Dow Jones Industrial Dividend ETF. Now this particular fund has a total of 27 equity holdings and you can see these are all blue chip stocks. The main difference between an ETF and a mutual fund, the ETF you can trade during the day whereas a mutual fund, the orders go in at the end of the day. There's basically three ways to invest in dividends. One could be mutual funds like we've already talked about. It could be dividend ETF funds, and you can also invest in individual stocks that pay a dividend. Now our topic here today is primarily on dividend ETF funds, but we're gonna look at some of the advantages of dividend ETFs and individual stocks. Typically, dividend ETFs will hold 50 or more stocks to reduce the risk, it gives you some diversification. And another positive is the dividend ETF will go out and buy those stocks and they will manage it and that will save you time. Now, advantages of individual stocks. Individual stocks will allow you to customize your own portfolio. You can sell a stock if you feel it's not performing and individual stocks don't have management fees. Now let's take a look at the dividend potential. We're looking at the S&P 500 here. This is from the period of 1997 to 2017. The gray line here is the S&P 500 index and the blue line here is the S&P 500 index with dividends reinvested. Over this 20 year period, the S&P 500 grew 190%. But when you reinvest dividends, the growth is 321% over 20 years. If you're reinvesting your dividends, it allows the compounding effect to take place and build a substantial nest egg like we see here with the S&P 500. Now, some people argue that investing in growth funds or in individual stocks can be more powerful than dividend investing. And that might be a matter of opinion. And yes, in some cases that could be true. Now here's a look at Apple Computer from 1997 to 2017, the same period that we looked at the S&P 500 just a moment ago. In those 20 years, Apple Computer went up 35,000%. So yes, if you find a stock like Apple and you invest in it, by all means, it's worth doing. You can still have your own individual favorite stocks and do dividend investing at the same time. Now here's a chart that I found from Visual Capitalist. This gives you an idea how much dividends individual stocks pay. Now these are what's called dividend aristocrats. These are stocks that have grown their dividend per share for at least 25 years. Now on the left hand side here we have the dividend yield and then inside we have the individual stocks and their yields. Now, at the time that this information was compiled, AT&T was paying 6.9% and then there was ExxonMobil paying 6.1%, Chevron paying 5.1%, International Business Machines was paying 4.9% dividend yield. Now as we scroll down, you'll notice that 
most of these stocks are in the range of say 4% down to maybe even 1%. The dividend ETFs that we're going to look at are made up of individual stocks that may have dividends anywhere between 2 to 5 to 6%. We're going to take a look at our best high dividend ETF funds. Then we have a second list, which is our top growth high dividend ETF funds. We have four funds on our list here. And you can see here in the middle column, it gives our dividend yield. Now, our first dividend ETF we're going to look at here is iShares Core High Dividend ETF. We have the return for the last 10 years, the year to date return as of the time of this video. And then you can look at the dividend yield. Also, we list the expense ratio and the risk beta. So iShares Core High Dividend has a dividend yield of 3.83%. Now, Spider S&P 500 High Dividend ETF has a dividend yield of 4.3%. And Invesco High Dividend Low Volatility ETF has a dividend yield of 4.35%. And the WBIY Power Factor High Dividend ETF has a dividend yield of 5.05%. So you can see here by investing in a dividend ETF, you get a yield that's slightly better than the average of the individual stocks that we just took a look at. Now we're going to take a look at our top growth dividend ETFs. So these funds have a good dividend yield, but they also have the potential to grow their net asset value. We're looking at Vanguard High Dividend ETF here. Last 10 years, it's grown 10.72% and the dividend yield is 3.02%. The Schwab High Dividend ETF, last 10 years has grown 12.7%. The dividend yield is 3.42% at the time of this recording. The Fidelity High Dividend ETF grew 10.24%, and the dividend yield was 3.42%, and the iShares Select Dividend ETF grew 11.1% over the last 10 years, and the dividend yield was 3.57%. If we look at the growth of all of these, they're all over 10% over the last 5 to 10 years. Now, we looked at the top dividend ETF funds with the best yield. So the next question is, when is the best time to invest and purchase dividend ETFs? We're looking at a chart of the S&P 500. This is a monthly chart that goes from 2002 to present 2022. Now, if you decided to invest all of your money in 2007, 2008, when the market were at their highs and there was a lot of excitement in the stock market, a few months later, you would have seen a dip in the markets. And that would have been frustrating. On the other hand, had you decided to invest all your money in 2014, 2015 area, the market continued to go higher. So there are some studies that say, go ahead and invest your money at these highs or whenever you get the money. However, they do point out you may have some pain if you're investing at the highs, but over the long period of time, the market will continue higher. Keep in mind, there's no guarantees that the market will continue higher. If you're a long-term investor, another approach is dollar cost averaging. You invest a little bit each month. Sometimes you'll be buying at the highs of the market and other times you'll buy more shares when the market dips. But again, over time, the market continues to move to the upside. And here's a third strategy a person can use. This came from the book, The Single Best Investment, Creating Wealth and Dividend Growth by Lowe Miller. In this book here, I want to share one important aspect to when is the best time to invest. They call it the six-month relative weakness. And I'm going to read this here. It says, one of the most intriguing things we found in our testing is that among the most powerful predictors for future price performance is at least six months of relative weakness, followed by a notable increase in relative strength. He gives an example in this book using the stock Clorox. Here's the stock price. He's talking about six months of weakness in the stock price and also six months of weakness in the relative strength index. And then when you get a powerful move up, that's the time to buy. Let's go back to our S&P 500 monthly chart. Here we were in 2008 and the stock market dropped and it was well over six months. Here's the relative strength index up at the top. And when this relative strength index dipped and then started to turn back up, that was the buying opportunity. Now let's compare it to where we're at right now. We've been down at the time of this recording about nine months. 
the relative strength index has been dropping. Not nearly as much as it did in 2008, but it's been dropping. Now we don't know if it's going to continue to drop or not. What we're looking for here is when the relative index starts to bottom out and then starts to turn back higher, and that is our buying point. Now another term for this is buy low, sell high. But we're using some indicators here to help us make the decision. We're going to use this dividend calculator from Dividend Athlete to help us determine the potential for passive income. Keep in mind, this is just an example. There's no guarantees. The starting principal in this case is $10,000. The dividend tax rate is 15%. Annual contribution is $5,000 per year. That's a little bit more than $400 per month. This is 30 years of investing. Annual dividend is 4%. Expected annual share price appreciation, 6%. Now, in this particular case, after 30 years, the portfolio would grow to $422,000. The dividend income would be $17,150 per year. So this would be a nice supplement to your Social Security. Let's take a look at a second example. In this case, the person has $300,000 to invest. Let's say they're 55. They have 10 years to invest before they're going to retire. The dividend tax rate again is 15%. The contribution is $400 plus per month or $5,000 per year. The expected annual share price appreciation is 6% and we're going to use an annual dividend of 4% in this case. Their $300,000 would grow to $564,000 and the dividend income would be $22,913 per year. Keep in mind we cannot guarantee what the stock market will do in the future. However, this does give you some ideas about the income potential for dividend ETF investing. So we looked at the best dividend ETFs and also the top dividend growth ETFs that you can find out there in the market. So I hope this information was useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Thanks for watching the best dividend ETFs for retirement and passive income.